working. Right, I'm hoping that's working. Okay, so what, what we're going to do is a 10, 15 minute um, whirlwind tour of diabetes physiology, um, diabetes medicine and diabetes treatment um, that what you should have covered in your lectures over about nine hours. Okay, now when I first graduated it was the, the terminology was juvenile and adult onset diabetes, okay? Then it became type 1 and type 2, and then it became idem and nidum, not insulin dependent, non insulin dependent, and more recently it became back to type 1 and type 2. And the reason for this change here was in the late 80s, um, a lot of the immunological testing was being done and immune markers were being found for those with the type 1 diabetes, okay? And then with the greater understanding of the insulin resistance, the metabolic syndrome, and that became type 2. Okay, so the definition of type 1 is it's an autoimmune process. So the, the beta cells have been, been destroyed, and that's why they've got the diabetes. Type 2 is the, the resistance to the effect of insulin. Okay, so that's effectively what they are. But it's also known that, that sort of, even with this classification, that some of these people didn't have the, the um, immune markers. So they effectively had type 2, and with the increasing prevalence of obesity in kids, more and more kids are getting the type, getting the type 2 diabetes. But it was also known that some of these people with NIDM, or non-insulin dependent, needed the insulin to survive. Okay, and they were actually a slow onset type 1. So type 1 is reserved for the immune process, it could be immediate onset, as in the kids, or it could be a, a slow onset, as in the adult form. And type 2 is reserved for those who are resistant to insulin. Then we also have the gestational diabetes, which is the, the form that happens during pregnancy. And during pregnancy, the demand for insulin just goes up massively. So the demand for insulin goes up. The beta cells have to produce that insulin, and some people, they just can't produce enough. So that's effectively how diabetes comes on during pregnancy. And then there's, of course, there's other types of diabetes. You think of people with um, pancreatic cancer uh, are gonna have diabetes because the beta cells aren't going to be working. Okay, so if we rub all this off, that's effectively understanding all that. So we'll start with, start with type 1 and we'll run through that. So type 1 is the immune, uh, immune destruction of the beta cells. So effectively what happens if we draw this as 0 to 100% the beta cell mass, how many beta cells is left, and then time, put time over here, and then effectively what happens is there's something now we have, a, we have a beta cell mass, and then there's some sort of insult, something happens that, um, whether it's a viral infection, um, the casein protein in milk's been implicated, um, it certainly suggests it's seasonal, but effectively what happens is there's, there's some sort of infection, the body goes after that infection, creates the antibodies, but those antibodies actually go after the beta cells as well. So the, the viral infection has the same molecular makeup on its surface as the beta cells. So there's some sort of insult happens to the beta cells and the body goes after them. So the beta cell mass starts decreasing. Okay, but what beta cells are left can spit out more and more insulin so they can cope until you get down to a point, you know, something like 75 to 80 percent, you know, the beta cells have gone. Then all of a sudden, those remaining beta cells can't produce enough insulin. So, and there's going to be a sudden, a sudden onset of diabetes. So diabetes has been coming on for quite a while, and, and all of a sudden it appears with that acute presentation, the weight loss, and the, the hypoglycemia. Um, the, the beauty of this is that, that back here, you know, all the immune markers can be detected. So there's potential for intervention. Um, in, in, in you know, twin studies, you know, one, one has diabetes, the other one can be tested for the immune markers. And there are a number of interventions under trial to try and halt this process before they get to that. So that's your classic type one in kids. Okay. Now the, there is a the, there is a, a, a the, the type one or the immune onset that happens in adults, and it does happen. Effectively, what they have is this: they just have a much much longer onset to the process. So it's not this, this, the curve's not so steep, steep rather. So effectively, they don't develop the diagnosis till quite late. They may start presenting with symptoms around here and the diet gets changed you know, on the assumption it's a type 2. Maybe they exercise, so you know, it can be managed and controlled, but eventually the beta cell mass is gone. Now, insulin is an anabolic hormone. 
which means insulin is, is going to have to be put on body weight. Okay, insulin is banned at, at the elite sport level for that very reason because an anabolic hormone. Um, think about endurance athletes taking insulin; they're going to get more glucose into the muscles, so they don't want to take it. So they, they do want to take it, and that's why it's been banned. But also think about if, if insulin is an anabolic hormone. If these kids are insulin deficient, they're going to lose weight. So that's why, you know, in the acute presentation, type one diabetes is a loss of weight purely because the insulin is not there. So they, at this stage here, they need insulin to survive. Or, you know, or they, you know, prior to 1922, 1923, you know, diabetes was fatal. You know, five years old, you know, as young as 18 months, um, they, they're not going to survive. They need insulin. So they'll get an insulin injection here. Um, and for some reason, the beta cells recover, okay? So the beta cell mass might go up a wee bit. This, no one really knows what, what, what's going on, um, or very little is known about what's going on, but there's a sort of honeymoon phase in which the beta cells actually recover slightly, and they may not need insulin for a short period of time. And that unfortunately does give some parents hope that they've been cured. And once every few years, you, you might read in the news media about some sort of case of um, parents being jailed for because um, their kid died because they were told by an alternative health practitioner, no, 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 stop taking the insulin. You know, unfortunately, there's no, it, it will continue. There's no, no one, no one has gone off insulin in type one. You know, it's as simple as that. So that's type one. So let's rub all that out and talk about.